Algebra 1 honors, lesson 5.1 slope and 5.2 slope and direct variation, which is really the same thing, but we'll, we'll get to that. So what's slope? Um, we want to know how steep a line is. So it's a measure of how steep, no, I don't know how to spell steep, I think it's with a P, a line is. cares? Well, we're going to be comparing data, and it's going to be important to know that one's going to slope of this, and that one's going to slope of that. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about something called the y-intercept, uh, coming soon to a lesson near you, uh, but slope is what it's all about. You really need to understand negative slope, we're losing money, positive slope, we're making money, really positive slope, we're making lots of money, that sort of thing if you were running a business. So this picture to the right shows slope, and it's uh, pretty much defined as rise over run. How much are we going up divided by how much are we going left to right? So that's the y2 minus y1 is the rise, and the x2 minus x1 is the run. So that's the graphical, and that's the algebraic. Algebraic looks like this. Slope, given the letter M, how come? Good question, can't answer it. They think it might be French for hill, but they have no idea. X2 minus X1. So you're given a couple of points. Remember, only two points are needed to define a line. You can calculate your slope. So, graphically, it's just pulling it off the graph. I'm not going to get into that. First things first, I'm going to label them. Cannot possibly over-recommend this technique. It doesn't really matter if I do y1 or y2 first, as long as I also do x1, x2 first. So to keep it consistent, I'll just do this. m equals 4 minus 2. This is where they start to say algebra skills come in. you got to watch your negatives. 3 minus negative 1. 2 over 4, 1 half. So this would be a slope that goes up to the right, but at a relatively gentle rise. Now, what I just said, a fractional slope is a gentle rise. Fractional doesn't mean anything because it could be 10 seconds, 10 thirds, something like that. But if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to go up at a gentle rise. Positive slope means you're looking at up to the right. Find the slope of the line that passed through 8, 2, and 5, 5. Now I feel like graphing it first for no particular reason. Now this is down to the right, so when we do it, we better get a negative slope. And I go through all this because people just, well, it's math class, I'll just blindly plug in numbers and pray that something good happens. And it kind of bothers me. I mean, look at the problem and use some intelligence. It's not that hard. So, five minus two over five minus eight equals three over negative three, negative one. So this is down to the right. And one is what I call the middle of our slopes. Some slopes will have a gentle slope, some will have a steep slope. One or negative one is a 45 degree angle. In this case, down to the right. Helps if you know all this. Really can save you some time. Really can help you when you go wrong on a problem and don't realize it. Say, hey, I thought that was a negative slope. Well, I got a positive and fixed it. So now we've got slopes of flat lines no steepness whatsoever. It's either vertical or horizontal. So what's going on? And that's something involving zero. So, one, two, negative one, two. Zero divided by 
anything that's not zero is zero. If you forget that, go ahead and use your calculator, it'll tell you. So we graph it, we get one, two, and one, two. Slope is zero. Here's how I remember this. Draw a big Z. How do you start? By drawing a sort of horizontal line. So slope of zero, horizontal line. I cannot tell you how many people cannot remember this. And it will save you so much aggravation. Horizontal line, the slope is zero. Remember that. Now we look at another one. Notice whenever I see a minus minus, I change it to plus plus. We get 5 over 0, which everybody says, oh, that's 0. No. Try it in your calculator. Your calculator will say undefined. A vertical line has an undefined slope. 1, negative 2, 1, 3. How do you remember that one? Make a big U for undefined. The first thing you do is go vertical. So this is und dot undefined. Graph them, look at them, have some intelligence. Horizontal line, slope is 0. Vertical line, slope is undefined. Oh, it's math. I don't want to be a geek and learn all that stuff. Fine. Make your life harder. Nothing I can do about it. So, when we know the slope in order to pair, we find any other point in the line. Find the value of r so that the line has a slope of negative 3, 2. Well, this is why we learned algebra so we can solve interesting problems. Don't tell me it's not interesting. I don't want to know. Negative 3 over 2 equals negative 3 minus 6 over 10 minus r negative 3 over 2 equals negative 9 over 10 minus r if you can figure this out by looking at it because I can 3 times th negative 3 is negative 9 3 times 2 is 6 r is going to equal 4 great if not just Jimmy Neutron it cross multiply negative 3 times 10 minus r equals negative 18. Negative 30 plus 3r equals negative 18. 3r equals 12, r equals 4. All right? Problems you will see on the ACT in your class for the rest of your math career. Crank them out, use your technique, and go. So, the graph to the right shows the amount of spent on food and drink at U.S. restaurants in recent years. <laughs> well, 17 to 30 years ago being recent. Find the rates of change from 1980 1990 and 1990 to 2000. So 1980 to 1990, and these are in billions, but we're not going to get into that. Which one's X and which one's Y? Well, this is your X, because that's what we put in. So... 1980 to 1990, slope is 238 minus 120 over 1990 minus 1980. 238 minus 120, since I'm out of room, I'm going to keep this one simple. Just do all the math at once and get a decimal. And a dandy calculator. Eleven point eight. That means we spent eleven point eight billion dollars per year or more every year from 1990, 1980 to 1990. Now here, m equals three seventy six minus 238 over 2000 minus 1990. By the way, it's positive. Should it be? Darn right it should be. 
and now the slope is 12.8 so we've actually been spending a little bit more money just you know 0.1 billion it's not a big number uh, per year explain the meaning of the slope already did see above that's the thing about word problems you gotta make sense of them and how are the different rates of change shown on the graph um, it's a uh, connect the dots graph I don't know what else to call it in math we don't do that we look for a constant slope USA Today is famous for doing these goofy graphs so the graph below shows the number of US passports issued find the rate of change that's what I'm talking about hey we need more people in our office why we've gone up by XYZ each year so I'm going to start shortcutting things just in the interest of time 91 to 95 5.3 minus 3.4 over 4 years that's subtracting these That's 0 0.7, 0 0.475, and that's in millions, so they add about half a million a year of passports, so need to hire some people. That means million per year. And for the other one, from 95 to 99, 6.7 minus 5.3 over 4 again. is 0.35 so it's slowed down a little bit and you can see that here's a slope and here's a slope it's a little bit less as we go along but not that much it's still going up a lot each year so that's what I just described what the difference in these rates means we're issuing more passports each year but at a slower rate of increase so slope and direct variation feels like oh it's another subject it's not Direct variation is just the slope. And now we use K for German constant. That's the slope. Just means there's no Y intercept, which we'll talk about later. There's no number out here. So, what does it mean? The classic is a spring. If I hang a weight on a spring, the weight will drop it, bring it down further. How much? Well, that's the constant of the spring. The more weight I put on, the further it will go down. So I add 10 pounds, 10 times the constant. I add 20 pounds, 20 times the constant. So the K just means it's when the X goes up the Y goes up if K is positive if not it flips it's just a direct variation so here's the direct variation you have to go find slope got x1, y1, x2, y2. Slope is 3 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. See, it always goes through the origin. So your slope is 3, which means your constant is 3. y equals 3x. Boy. Here, like I said, it could be negative, so you do the I always do the zero on the left. Slope is negative two minus zero over negative one minus zero. Negative two over negative one. Your slope is two. Pathetic. Slope is negative two. K is negative two. Oh, look at that. It was already listed there. So, that's all direct variation is. We just play with it a little bit. We get to graph it before we get whole intercepts. It always goes to the origin. Um, we always start at the origin. Because zero, 0, is always going to work in all of these. That's why. 
So, 4x, 0 here. Slope, rise over run, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. m equals 4 over 1, equals change in y over change in x. Positive up to the right, 4 is fairly steep, looks like I did it correctly. 0, 0, down 1, over 3. m equals negative 1 over 3, equals change in y over change in x. Or it could equal 1 over negative 3. That would be up 1 and over 3. So that would be in the opposite direction. Negative slope, fairly shallow. Negative 1 third. Looks like I did it right. So you got a lot of practice ahead of you. you got to get good at this sort of stuff. It's got to become second nature. Because I'm blowing through these problems. I've done it before. But you got to be quick. We can also play with this whole equation. We know it's y equals k times x. I didn't say 28 equals k times 7. And this is really getting you ready for physics. You have equations like f equals ma and things like that. They're direct variation. More acceleration, more force, more mass, more force, that sort of thing. All other things being equal. Blast this out, you'll find k equals 4. So you go y equals 4x. You say, well, what's x and y equals 52? 52 equals 4 times x. x equals 13. Again, if you want to go through and solve those slowly, go for it, but I keep it short. A flock of snow geese migrated 375 miles in 7.5 hours. So I'm going to go with uh, H and M. So their miles is direct variation compared to how many hours they're flying. So 375 miles, K times 7.5 hours, K equals... Fifty, so they can go fifty miles in an hour. It's pretty impressive for geese. So y equals fifty x. That's direct variation. Graph it. It always goes through zero. One, two, three, four, five. One. You go up by tens. Days are one, or hours are two, three. Horrible graph I chose because was right off right away, but I'm not trying to make a perfect graph. That's the end of this chapter when we're trying to fit data very nicely. Steep graph up to the right. Looks like I did it right. How many hours of flying would take the geese to go 3,000 miles, a.k.a. right across America? <laughs> a while, I'll leave it at that. hours. Something like two and a half days. Assuming they don't sleep, eat, go to the bathroom. Yeah, whatever. So that's what we do with direct variation. Create a little model and then we play with it until we get it where we want it. That is about it. Good luck and as always, happy mathing.